In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Look up at the sky and count the stars, if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from the Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O oh Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, and a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all of these, split them in two, and placed them each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, to your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have pity on me, 
and answer me of you my heart speaks you my glance sees the Lord is my light and my salvation your presence O Lord I see Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my life. My A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct, them, conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach, their glory in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. 
And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but became fully awake. They saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. On this, our Lenten journey, we come to this second week and we see this vision of the glory of Christ. Now, for most of our days, we don't have exceptional experiences that show us something of the divine. But we have all had experiences at different points in our lives when we have gone someplace like to a shrine or to a retreat or even to a conference at Steubenville, Ohio at the university. We enter into an experience that's not unlike what Peter, James, and John experienced. They went They were all excited to go up the mountain with Jesus, but at the same time, they were tired and they fell asleep. So the next thing they know, they wake up and they see something that's very unusual. They weren't used to seeing Jesus this way, glowing and showing the glory of the resurrection. They were only learning at the time, about what it was to have a trans-temporal experience, an experience that somehow was present to them, but somehow was also outside of time. And they recognized those that were standing with Jesus in this transfiguration, or as the Greeks call it, the metamorphosis, they saw Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the great prophet. They were overwhelmed. They didn't know what to make of it. So the scripture says, Peter didn't know what he was saying. So he excitedly says, let us build some tents for you so that you and Moses and Elijah can remain here but then a cloud covered the whole scene and they were found themselves with Jesus alone. They had expected that when they came up this height of mountain and they saw this Christ in glory, that that was it. They would remain there forever. And sometimes we too might have those experiences I know I've been on retreat and had some powerful insights given to me, either just by praying at the Mass or being at adoration of the Blessed Sacrament or participating just in the communal expression of focusing our love and devotion to the Lord. And I've thought, gee, wouldn't it be nice just to stay here all the time? But then the realization sets in that we have to go back. We have to go back to our lives in the world. But we don't come back the same. 
we come changed. We have an experience that now we can carry with us and remember. Many of the saints talk about the experiences they've had in prayer. Some of them have visions, visions given by God. We have only to think of the children of Fatima, how Our Lady showed them powerful visions about what was coming and the need for the world for repentance. We can think of those saints who have seen visions of purgatory and hell, and they are powerfully changed. We can have experiences when we come to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. We can know the presence of Jesus in the sacrament and carry him with us in our hearts. Today, we heard in our first reading Abraham experiencing something mysterious from God. God is speaking to Abraham and is trying to lead him to the promised land. But he still doesn't have an heir. And he asks the Lord, how can I know? How can I know that what you promise is going to come true? And he, God takes Abraham outside of the tent and says, look up at the stars. Your descendants will be as numerous as the stars of heaven. And Abraham looks and believes. But we have to pay attention to one detail in this story. At the end of this part of the story, where God has him outside, it says, when the sun had set and it was dark, they appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch. Abraham had been outside in the sunlight. He knew the stars were there, and he knew the promise of God was true. Just as we know the stars are there, and we know that God's promise to us is true, and our promise is that of the resurrection of the dead. In our letter to Saint, of St. Saint Paul to the Philippians, he talks about where we are from. Our citizenship is in heaven. From it, we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him to do so. The whole purpose of Jesus coming to us in order to save us was to allow us to participate as human beings in the resurrection of the dead. And he promises to all who believe in him the glorification of their bodies at the end of time, at the last judgment, when God will be all in all. God has made this promise to us. And he, week by week, ratifies this over and over again for us in the most holy sacrifice of the altar. For here, we enter into Jesus' sacrifice on Calvary in such a way that our bodies and souls are being transformed in a way that gives us a foretaste of the heavenly kingdom. We don't just merely receive bread and wine at the altar. We receive his most sacred body and blood. We receive his real presence in the sacrament. We receive the divine image of God that he gives us at our coming into existence in this world. We have but to believe in him and trust in him and follow him along his way, who is the way, the truth, and the life. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our good and heavenly Father makes covenant with us, his chosen ones. Now we present our petitions, knowing that he will hear them. Please respond, hear us, O Lord. For all who dedicate themselves to God's love, that when tested, they follow Abraham's example of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For patient leaders of nations, that they strive again and again for a per permanent end to war. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That those living under tyranny, that their faith in God be enduring source of strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For our parish community, that no members feel alienated or alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those members of this parish who are sick, hospitalized, homebound, and in nursing care facilities, may our prayers today give them courage and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the intentions we hold in our hearts. Hear our prayers and strengthen us with your spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the people of Ukraine at this difficult time in their lives, that they may be kept safe and counted among all the faithful, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, we ask you to transform us by the power of your Holy Spirit into the body and blood of your Son in this world that what we ask in word may be fulfilled in deed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Be God With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God.
Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the fast Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, through whom Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death. On the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celia terra, Gloria tua, O sana in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, O sana in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem tuam annunciamus domine, et tua resurrectionem confitemur, donec venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servant, Josello, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now rests in the sleep of peace. Grant him, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though are sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them, and you bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi. Dona nobis pacem. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to this world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Corpus Christi Custodia Mea Vita Maternum.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us. Indeed, transfigure us, Lord Jesus. Before we go, I'm just so very happy to see all of you. We were a little confused earlier this morning. Many of our 1030 people thought we lost time or something or gained time, and they were here at 8 o'clock. So they were surprised. But I guess they set their clocks back. Maybe? No? No. They did something. I don't know what they did, but there were a lot of them here. And it's good to see so many of you here. I love seeing our little kids it's especially fine. It's good to see some of our returning students who are here all the time, and some of our college students, and some of our high school students. We're all excited, aren't we, Lennox? She says, yes, I'm excited. Um, one thing I forgot to announce earlier was the Knights of Columbus are going to be standing at the doors taking up collection for the people of Ukraine. The Supreme Council of the Knights has asked us to do this, they're going to send a whole lot of money from the United States to uh, Ukraine. 100% of the money is guaranteed to go to the people who actually will need help. So if you would, um, we have, I don't know who's going to be standing out there, but some, some of the guys will, and either here or at the door back there, um, they have a little bucket for us. Um, if you miss this, just send in an envelope and we'll pass it along to the Knights. Um, it's always good to have Lent, isn't it? We can grow in the Lord and experience his love and transformation, even as we celebrate each and every one of these Masses. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his holy apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah? Are you at... 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 Are
Somebody left it on the yeah. Oh. I'm assuming it Yeah, I guess so. That would be good. That was easy enough. Uh, yeah, so I was like, Frozen in your car. 